What's up everybody? So we're out in the shop and in this episode we are focusing on the new build. We've got a few things that we need to do in this episode. So in the last episode, the little bonus one that I did, I showed you, you know, the designing process of this particular build. But now we need to go through, we need to cut out this template. We need to put it on some thicker quarter inch thick template material. This is just wood that I use. And uh, we're going to put it on here, get it cut out, make sure that the ergonomics are within, within reason, I guess you could say. Um, we, I already know that this is going to be an insane deal. It's going to be kind of off the wall, but I still want it to feel good in my hand. So I've got to make sure the handle is comfortable for both two-handed and one-handed use. Because there's going to be times where I'm going to want to swing it one-handed. There's going to be times that I'm going to want to swing it two-handed. So I need to make sure that it's going to work for both of those options. So ergonomics is going to be a big thing on this. And we need to get it put on the thicker template material so that I can start playing with that profile and making sure that we're making this knife to where even though it's a crazy build, that it still kind of makes sense. So we want it to be functional and insane all at the same time so that's what we're going to focus on today we're going to get it on the template material we're going to start messing with the profile getting it fine-tuned and then i'm going to start planning out how this is going to be put and utilized with this 1084 so with this i'm going to have to do quite a bit of forging we are going to forge the handle pretty much 100 percent to shape and then we're going to go ahead and have to do some things with the actual blade. Because we're going to have such a long taper, I might go ahead and actually cut a little bit of the angle in. And then that way I can forge the rest of it to shape. Because I don't feel like squeezing two inches of steel down to that itty bitty point. <laughs> you know, work smarter, not harder. And... Uh, we're gonna have a little bit of that to start thinking about how we're gonna lay it out and how we're gonna get everything to go where it needs to go. So that's what y'all have to look forward to in this episode. Let's get this thing cut out. Let's put it on some template material, put it in our hands and see how it feels. Let's do it.
right, so we got, of course, template cut out, which is on the paper. And then from that, we needed to go ahead and put it on the actual wooden template material so we could see where we needed to adjust and modify, things like that. And we got that all done on here. So now the handle makes more sense with how it's profiled and things like that. Handle makes more sense. The blade makes more sense. I was able to modify and adjust just a few things to fine tune it. But now, whenever we're holding it, it's exactly where it needs to be. Like it's actually comfortable right here. And then if I wanna hold it one-handed, because of the way this is shaped, it feels really good. If I wanted to hold it back here, it feels really good. So if I wanted to swing it like this, it's comfortable. Like this, it's comfortable. Like this, it's comfortable. All of those different things are comfortable. Now, as I got done doing the actual profile on this, I was sitting there going, I wonder if that would look really cool if it was just a one-handed. Like if I pulled this all the way up and I just had a one-handed uh, handle on it with just that craziness sticking out front. But I feel like that would really be, it, it would throw the weight off. It, it, even though there are plenty of knives out there that have blades this big with one handle or one-handed handles on them. There's plenty of those out there. I think just the extreme version of this, it, it just needs to have this crazy handle on it to just offset and balance it really well. And I wanna be able to swing this two-handed through something because that's gonna be really cool. We're definitely gonna cut some watermelons and things like that in half with it. So that's gonna be fun whenever we actually get to that point. But uh, I'm gonna do watermelons. I'm gonna uh, definitely cut two by four with it because that would be a blast. But what we gotta do now is end up forging this. So if y'all are new to my videos, I tend to film as I'm building it. So you'll have different parts of the build series. I break them down a little bit more because I am building this in real time. <laughs> so as we're going through and I'm releasing a video, I film all the way up to the night before I release a video. So whenever you're seeing this, let's say I released a video on Tuesday, I filmed all the way until Monday night. And then on the Friday videos, I go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all the way through the end of Thursday, then I edit Thursday night and release the video Friday morning. So that's the way I do all of these builds. Y'all are getting to see it as we go. If I have an error or a mistake whenever we're at the heat treat process, y'all will see the build all the way up to that point because that's reality. You know, if I just went through and filmed entire videos and released them, you wouldn't see all the errors because a lot of those get edited out because people don't like showing their flaws or errors. I get it. You know, this is entertainment and we want to try and put out the best video possible. But for a lot of my builds, if they work out, great. I've lucked out and a lot of them have worked out. Uh, but if they don't, well, sometimes you got to change it up. Y'all saw whenever I first tried my first um kuma or not kumais but gomais and sandmais and whenever i first started doing the layered steel and i didn't have the right forge settings uh for heat and things like that y'all saw those mistakes we started to build didn't get to finish the build that way we had to modify it or change it or do something like that but y'all get to see these processes so in this episode we're going to show you the steel that i'm going to use which is this piece right here now if you see this piece is not as long as the template because we don't need it to be. We're going to be forging a lot of this. So we've got all of this steel right here that we're going to be able to move and extend everything. As a matter of fact, I'll probably only forge this piece right here. From here back is going to be the handle because all of this steel will get pushed back and we'll be able to do the handle off of it. So I might not even use everything that's up here, but we're gonna end up forging the handle to shape. We're gonna forge the profile of the blade to shape. We're gonna do all of that. This is a piece of 1084. I think that's gonna be just fine for the type of knife or sword or really big knife that we're making. It doesn't have to be any type of crazy steel, 80 CRV2 or anything like that. 1084 is an awesome steel. Plus, one of the things that I wanna do with this uh, 
I'm gonna do acid etching and stone washing and all that stuff and I really like the way 1084 takes an acid etch and takes a stone wash I think it looks awesome so we're gonna be doing that on this because we're gonna be leaving the hammer forge marks we're gonna be you know whenever you do an acid etch and you do a stone wash and all that stuff on something that's hammer forged it just there's gonna be a lot of depth in this knife so y'all are gonna get to see that whole process so in the next video what I plan on doing is trying to get the handle shaped because when we get our handle forged out, we can actually start seeing what material we have left to do the blade part. So let's say I get the handle forged out in that little area back here. So let's get, we start forging in this little area here and push this out and start pushing forward. If we only use this much to make this whole entire handle, then I might be able to cut off a whole section here because this whole entire section, I can make a whole nother knife with that, forging it. It's 3 16 thick. This is thick material. So if I can cut this section off right here, I can take and forge a whole knife out of this piece. So we're going to forge the handle first because that's going to move the most material either direction as we're compressing it and flattening it back out. So we're going to do the handle and then see how much blade uh, length I can cut off to use for other projects and go from there. So in the next episode, we are going to be working on, which is Sunday, we're going to be working on forging the handle to shape. That's what I'm going to work on um, on Friday night, Saturday night, and then release that Sunday morning. So that's what you'll have to look forward to, forging the handle to shape. And then the next build after, or the next video after that will be the Friday video, and that will be forging the blade to shape and doing that. And then we're going to have, you know, bevels and all that process. This is going to be a really involved build. There's a lot of stuff that we got to do to make this happen. And I've got to, you know, handle scales that are that long, which is going to be crazy. It's like 12 inches long. But that's what we have to look forward to. Y'all see the, the shape that we have going here? I'll tell you, if you're not making templates, if you're not doing this right here and putting them in your hand so you can actually see if you need to change the profile, you're doing yourself a disservice. This is real cheap. I know wood is crazy expensive right now. This right here, that big piece of wood that I had, that was $1.95 at Lowe's. It's just poplar wood. There's no fanciness to this. And I've used the same templates. I mean, these are almost two years old right here, these templates. I've used them multiple times. So having something like this to put in your hand to see if the ergonomics are correct is a game changer. So definitely do that. Don't just draw it out, put it on a piece of steel and hope that it works out. You're wasting steel whenever you're doing that because I did this. I know exactly how much steel to start forging out and then how much steel I can cut off so that I'm not wasting that steel. So there you go. Guys, tell me if y'all are excited about this. How many of y'all think I should have made this one-handed? How many of y'all think that two-handed was the way to go? How many of y'all just think that this is absolutely insane? I'm thinking about naming it the insanity. I'm really thinking about that being the name. A lot of y'all have called it the ins called it the insanity and I think that that's what we're going to name it. So hmm, tell me what y'all think about that. Guys, that's the end of this one. If y'all would, give this video a like. Share this video with one of my other videos. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. Catch y'all next time.